Is the pre-crime division here? So many of you are probably familiar with the old Tom Cruise movie, Minority Report. And in Minority Report, probably some of you will remember the part where he's like uh, standing there and he's moving his hands around. It's like this virtual, he's like a virtual virtual kind of display that he's swinging around, kind of like the pre precursor to the kind of stuff we saw in the Avengers with Tony Stark and, and Jarvis, etc. These these cool displays that were like virtual and spinning around, kind of like the stuff you see in the uh, Apple Vision Pro nowadays, but a little more curved, right? A little more high-tech looking. And in this movie, if you recall the film at all, the concept was is that there were these super sophisticated AIs so if it was super, actually, I know it wasn't super sophisticated AIs. It was individuals who were psychic, right? They, were, they had this psychic ability to predict when a crime was about to happen. They would be able to figure out exactly like so-and-so would murder so-and-so or so-and-so would stab so-and-so or they'd have this argument and there was somebody would hit so-and-so, whatever. And Tom Cruise was, this, was a cop who was assigned to the pre-crime division. And the, the pre-crime division was supposed to get to the scene of the crime just as the crime was taking place and then arrest that person just before they were about to commit the crime. Now, philosophically, some of people would argue that even if they haven't committed, the, since they hadn't committed the crime yet, were they guilty of the crime? Interesting philosophical question. And of course, it's science fiction. It was, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. I forget exactly when it came out. It was a while back. And of course, people thought to themselves, there's no possible way. This is, this is, this is fantasy. This is science fiction. This is human beings who have, you know, extrasensory perception, some way that they can predict the future. But guess what, folks? AI is here and AI can now do that. You think to yourself, what are you talking about? I said, yep. I think it was Chicago, and they used tons of data and statistics, and they fed it into an AI, and the AI actually came back and gave percentage of chances that somebody was going to commit a crime within a certain period of time. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, yeah, that's fine, but how, do, how does this line up with a pre-crime unit? Well, I mean, this is V1. V1, if anything, is clunky. V1 of anything isn't really exact, right? So we are now seeing the embryonic stages of a pre-crime unit, which leverages AI, not these psychic human beings, to figure out if someone is liable to commit a crime. And if they can get a percentage like that within a certain period of time, if they can get a 60, 70 percent possibility that somebody was going to commit a crime. Maybe it's a little more fuzzy as to what kind of crime they're going to commit or where specifically they're going to commit it and who they're going to commit it on. That's probably still fuzzy. They probably can't figure that out yet. And I think one of the reasons why that is, is because the world is what it is. I mean, th there was a while back, I think there was um, a, a machine one Dota 2. So Dota 2 is this online MMORPG game where people have to, it's almost like a capture the flag sort of game. So you have your forces on one corner, they have their forces on the other corner, and they're supposed to fight against each other and capture the flag from the other corner, and then whoever captures the flag wins, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of like a World of Warcraft kind of thing, but a little more confined space. And there were reports that somebody had written an AI that was able to slam the best Dota 2 player. I mean, we've already had reports of AI slamming the best chess player. We've had reports of AI slamming the best World of Warcraft player. And now we've got reports of people of AI slamming the best Dota 2 player. So all this is, is leading up to a preponderance of evidence that, oh my God, AI is going to eliminate human beings. <laughs> the problem with the difference, of course, is these things like chess and World of Warcraft and Dota 2 are actually closed worlds. There's specific rules that work 
in these closed worlds. And AI can figure these closed worlds out because it knows all the rules and it can predict every single pathway of anything that it and any of its human opponents can do because the world is closed. Now the difference between this closed world and our world, life, is that our rules, there's a very few rules in life. Everything else is wide open. It's not a closed system like Dota 2 or World of Warcraft or chess. It's an open system. And it's subsequently many, many, many times more complicated than anything like Dota 2 or World of Warcraft. Since it's open, then anything can happen. And you're also talking about the actions of human individuals in time and space and place. So the fact that Chicago was able to get it down to a certain percentage of possible crime within a certain period is, if you ask me, pretty amazing. And it's only going to get better and better and better. But I don't think we have to worry too much about somebody showing up on our doorstep and saying, hey, next week you're going to slap this guy so he's going to proactively charge you with assault because you're going to do this next week. I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're ever going to get there because the, our world is too open. The rules, there's so many more rules that an AI or a human being can learn and can do and, and all of these variables are impossible for it to figure out. So there's a huge difference between commanding on a closed system like chess or Dota 2 or Warcraft and commanding in life. Because if we could command in life, then a lot of us could be a lot more successful because we had the rules. So just think about it. You could easily pick up a rule book and follow the rules and you would know exactly how to do a fantastic job. But this is also part of what's behind the 10,000 hour myth. The 10,000 hour rule says that all you have to do is practice for 10,000 hours and you can immediately become an expert in that space. But again, that's the same issue. In these closed worlds, yes. Outside of those closed worlds, in life, no. We're not there yet and who knows if we'll ever get there. There's just too much going on. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.